So the object here is to produce a diagonal factorization of a square matrix. In this first video, a two by two matrix, just to keep things arithmetically simpler. First step is to diagonalize this two by two matrix using the theorem that any square matrix can be similar to a diagonal matrix. That's a matrix whose only entries are down the main diagonal, the other entries being zero. If and only if this square matrix has got however many, in this case two, but in the general case n, linearly independent eigenvectors. And if that was the case, if this does have, in this case, two linearly independent eigenvectors, then the diagonal matrix that it would be um, similar to would be the two by two matrix whose main diagonal entries would be the two eigenvalues, such that this diagonal matrix would be equal to the matrix A pre-multiplied by the inverse of and post-multiplied by the matrix P made up of the independent eigenvectors as, uh, sorry, its entries, where P would be, in this case it's a two by two matrix, I'll just put it down this way, where there would be the two eigenvectors forming the columns. And if it was a three by three, there'd be three, and it would have to be linearly independent eigenvectors forming the three columns, and so on. Right, so the first step's going to be <coughs> get these eigenvalues, and hence find the eigenvectors to get this matrix before you start this other part of doing the actual factorization. Right, so for this one, well, there's different ways of setting that out. You could use that simple fact that A times, whatever it would be for one of the vectors, would be lambda being the eigenvalue times the vector. So swapping the sides, you'd have A minus lambda, and it would have to be I to extract it from the vector, times V1 would equal zero. In which case, since that's not zero, that would equal zero. So you could form a matrix of four minus lambda and so on and solve that. But I think I'll just use that other pattern for the characteristic polynomial, that quite a convenient little one, which just uses the various diagonal uh, determinants of order one, order two, order three. So that I would have in this case, just using this notation for the characteristic polynomial, I would have t squared in the monic form, the coefficient here, minus the trace of a times t plus the de determinant of a on its own. That would be the characteristic polynomial. I'll do in the next video a 3 by 3 where it just goes a step further. So what have you got here then? So that means the characteristic polynomial is going to be t squared minus, now the trace of a is just the sum of these two entries, the main diagonals, so it'll be negative 1, so it's take away negative 1, so it'll be plus 1, so it'll just be plus t. The determinant of a is going to be the main diagonal minus the other diagonal, so that's going to be negative 20 take away negative 8, so negative 20 plus 8 is negative 12. And that factorises to t, t, and that's going to be 3 and 4, and it's going to be minus the 3 plus the 4. <clears throat> so that equation, which means that the equation equal to 0, has got roots, which I'll not call t now, lambda 1, I'll call that the eigenvalue of 3, or an eigenvalue of negative 4. That would be the first part. There's the two eigenvalues. Now straight away, that means the diagonal matrix that it's going to be similar to would be this. So straight away, my diagonal matrix should be 3, 0, 0, negative 4. But we'll check that later <coughs> with this formula here. Right, the next part would be find the eigenvectors. Right, we'll have to take the cases separately. So taking the case lambda equals 3. That means I have to satisfy this equation. A minus lambda, so that's going to be the eigenvalue away from, the since it's i times i, the main diagonal entries. So that means I should have this, I should have, writing this equation here out, A minus lambda i, so 4 take away 3 is 1, the 1's going to be left alone, the negative 8 will be left alone, and then negative 5 take away 3 is going to be negative 8. That 
times, and I'll just call it xy for the eigenvector, should come to zero. And that gives a system of equations which just says this. x plus y is zero, and negative eight minus eight y equals zero. Now they're both equivalent to each other. That's just the first one multiplied up. Which means that to find a particular one, since there's one independent variable that can float here, we'll just choose x to be one. So my first eigenvector can be this. Just let x equal one, just to form the simplest of this set, in which case that would have to be negative one. Right, there's one eigenvector. Now what about the eigenvector for the second eigenvalue for negative four? Well, the same again. I'm going to put negative four in here. So that means I've got this minus negative four times i. So that's negative four in the two main diagonal entries and zero in the other ones. So it'll be four, take away the negative four, which will be eight. One will be left alone. And that's just negative eight. And negative five, take away the negative four, will be negative one. And then that times the second one should equal zero. So that means I've got eight x plus y equals zero and negative eight x minus y equals zero which is clearly equivalent to that one so there's just this system to be satisfied so there's one free variable might as well let the x have it so the second one so let x be one in which case y would have to be negative eight that being the second uh, eigenvector and you could easily check those just by multiplying them out that times that should produce three lots of that, that was the whole point of it. Which means that now I can make a statement about this matrix which should be composed of linearly independent vectors, those vectors being the eigenvectors, those vectors being one, negative one, and one, negative eight. And having that particular vector, I can, sorry, matrix, I can then get its inverse, which is easy in the case of a two by two. So it's going to be get the determinant first of all. So it'll be negative eight, take away negative one. So it's negative one point seven, and then the pattern's quite simple. Reverse that mean diagonal, negative eight one, and switch the signs to another diagonal. Right, that's the first part. Now just check that that in fact with this produces d. But we note d should be the eigenvalues were three and negative four. That should be my diagonal matrix. I should end up with this if I pre-multiply that by this and post-multiply it by that. So I'll clear it and check it. So just to check this, D, the diagonal matrix, which should be similar to A, should be formed by the inverse of P times A times P. So what have we got here then? So, well, it's just a lot of jiggery pokes, so I'll speed this bit up. I'll be down, inverse P, A, P. Right, so second pair first. So four take away one, three, four take away eight, negative four, negative eight plus five, negative three, and negative eight plus 40, 32. So that's a negative of seven of negative 24 plus three is negative 21, 32 minus 32 is zero, three minus three is zero, negative four plus 32 is, whoops, positive 28. So divided by negative seven will be three, zero, zero, negative four. And there it is. <clears throat> so the calculations were correct. Now, the diagonal factorization just comes from this part. If D is equal to that, if D is equal to the inverse of P, A, P, then rearranging that to read A, in other words, if you pre-multiply by the inverse of the inverse of P, so if I do P times D, that'll be P times P dash, be P to the inverse of that, that turns into I, so it goes. And then post-multiplying it by the inverse, so that just becomes i. Post multiply by that, so that also becomes i. That means you've got just a in the end. So a would be p d p to the negative one. So a has been rearranged into this factorization because it's a product of three two by two matrices. So I've got this then. So I've got a is equal to p one one negative one negative eight d which is just the matrix, the diagonal matrix containing the eigenvalues, times one seventh of negative eight, negative one, one. I should really just put that negative a seventh to the front of it all. 
is represented by that matrix instead, which might, on the face of it, look a bit clumsier than this matrix itself. But the handy thing about a diagonal matrix is it's very easy to multiply by it because all it does is multiply each of the rows by whatever numbers in that particular row. If, for instance, I had 3, 0, 0, negative 4 times, it doesn't matter what size of vector I put down here, I could put 1, 2, 3, negative 1, 0, 4, for instance, that's very quick because it's just going to be 3 1s and nothing, 3 2s and nothing, 3 3s and nothing. It's just going to be 3 times the top row. So it's just going to go 3, 6, 9. Same with the bottom one. It'll just be negative 4 times the bottom row. So it's just going to be nothing and the negative 4 times it, nothing and the negative 4 times it, nothing and the negative 4 times it. So it's just negative 4 times all of these. And it's even easier to multiply it by itself. Oops, going a bit scrolly here. Because in that case, there's only going to be these two diagonal entries. Because it's going to be 3 times that and then nothing. And then it's going to be just 4 times that. The answer would just be 3 3s are 9. That's a nothing. That's still a nothing. And 16. In fact, the handy thing about these diagonal matrices is it's very easy to square them. Take quite a bit of time to square that, more so for 3x3s three and 4x4s. Four but if I just wanted to square this, for instance, which I just did there, if I wanted to do something else then, if I wanted to cube that, for instance, the answer to that would just be 3 cubed, 27, negative 4 cubed, negative 64, straight away. Or if it was any other power, it would just be the power of those two diagonal entries. Right, with that in mind, what I could do with this is, if I wanted to find this to some higher power, I could use this part instead for a very simple reason. If I wanted to have a to the power n, which would be cumbersome here, even more cumbersome the higher the square order of that was, I could just do this. I could just do p d p to the negative 1, in other words, the diagonal factorization of a to the power n. And where that's handy is, that would just be p d p to the negative 1 times p d p to the negative 1 times p d p to the negative 1 and so on. And the handy thing is, each of these is going to cancel out during their multiplications. And all I'll be left with is a p at the beginning, an inverse of p at the end, and a d to the power n in the middle. So that if I wanted to have a power of some square matrix, all I would have to do, let's say all, there's been a bit of jiggery-pokery going on before this, all I would have to do is get that power of the diagonal matrix, which is extremely easy. Because all I've got to do is whatever power it is of these two entries. Although, yes, I've still got to pre-multiply it and post-multiply it. I'll do an example. Find a to the power 4 by using a diagonal factorization. Right, well, the diagonal factorization would be this. A would equal, now it's other way around this time, P, D, P to the negative 1, where D is that diagonal matrix composed of the main entries using the eigenvalues. So, if I wanted A to the power 4, it's simply going to be that from just the previous section. So, what is that then? So, I just copied in P here then, and then D to the power 4 is a diagonal matrix, so it's just power 4 of the main entries, 81 and 256. And then inverse of p, just using that simple pattern. Now, it should have had that negative asymptote in the middle there. I'll just put that to the front. Right, so that's negative asymptote of. Just leave this matrix alone and do this one. Now, this is easy because it's a diagonal matrix. It's just going to be 81 times the top and 256 times the bottom. So that makes the bottom straightforward. So that's negative 64, 8 and negative 81. Right, so it's negative of 7th of, so what's that going to be? It's going to be the negative of 256 away from that, negative 392, and 81 away from that, it's going to be 175. So it's going to be 648, and what's that? That's 2 to the 8, and that's 2 to the 3, so it's 2 to the 11, 2048. Take away that 648 negative 1400. Now that's 81, that's the same thing, 2048, so take away 81, that's negative 1967. So divide by negative 7, that's 5, 6, negative 25, 200, and 281. 8 to the power of 4 would be this, by using a diagonal factorization.